Farah. Not only is she one of Hollywood's most gifted actresses, she also possesses that elusive magical quality, the aura of a true movie star. A towering classic beauty, she has the depth and acting range most actors strive for but seldom reach. And though she's been recognized with numerous accolades and awards, Charlize Theron, the person, still remains a mystery. Born in South Africa on August 7, 1975, Charlize grew up on a farm, far from the lights and cameras of Hollywood. Nothing in her upbringing predestined her for a life of stardom. In fact, her first language was Afrikaans. And at the age of six, Charlize started on a career path toward her first passion, ballet. I was a ballet dancer for 12 years, and I look back on those days as my theater days. And uh, I'm now doing what I did for 12 years, those 12 years. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm telling stories. I'm putting on makeup changing my hair color and putting on clothes and telling stories and creating characters. At the age of 14, Charlize was eager to dance professionally, but with the political turmoil in South Africa, she found a golden ticket out through modeling. At 16, she won a national beauty pageant and, with her mother's blessing, Charlize accepted a modeling contract in Italy. After only a few months, she was offered to work for a top modeling agency in New York City. This was an opportunity for her to try her luck in the United States, and it paid off. After appearing on dozens of magazine covers, the stunning 5'9 blonde saw her modeling career skyrocket. But her deep calling for dance hadn't subsided. She soon auditioned and was admitted into the acclaimed New York Joffrey Ballet. Everything was going her way until a knee injury put a sudden stop to it. That was my um, dream. That was my passion. And uh, I continued that until I was 19, and, and I, my knees just uh, couldn't take it anymore. And I had to quit that career. And it was really, it was really like mourning a death. And I had to really understand why I loved it so much to find something to replace that creative satisfaction. And I realized that it was the storytelling aspect of it that I really missed, going on stage and telling a story. So my mom was really the one, this, you know, acting came way later in my life that said, you love movies, why don't you tell stories that way? Heeding her mother's advice, Charlize moved to Hollywood without any money or acting experience. Only two weeks later, the 20-year-old aspiring actress went into a bank to cash an out-of-state check, but the teller refused to perform the transaction. Flat broke and upset, Charlize made a scene and had a loud argument with him. Standing behind in line was John Crosby, a big Hollywood agent who noticed her. That moment changed her life. Yes, she was discovered in a bank which sounds like a Hollywood fairy tale, but that is definitely not enough to explain her success. She's enormously talented, very dedicated, and very determined. I mean, you can't be a ballet dancer for 10 years without having an amazing work ethic and a drive for perfection. Charlize was discovered, but she's successful because of who she is. One of her first obstacles was getting rid of her heavy South African accent. Without a budget to pay for classes, Charlize resorted to watching hours of television, honing in on a generic American accent. Her first break came quickly when she was cast as Helga in the 1996 independent film Two Days in the Valley. Not only was Charlize's sexy pose featured prominently on the movie poster, her vicious catfight with co-star Terry Hatcher became stuff of movie legend. Instantly, Charlize Theron's name was on the map. I am so fortunate, so lucky, and I, I mean, I can just thank everybody for, you know, having that belief. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I really am just very fortunate to be on this set with such a wonderful cast. I mean, we have an amazing cast, wonderful director. We're just working with the best, and that is just, you can't ask for anything better for a first time. It's very rare to see an actress's career take off just like that. She made her first impression in her very first film role. And what was really interesting was that it was a small role, but she really portrayed Helga as this far out, way out character. And it made a lasting impression after that catfight. Everybody in Hollywood was saying, 
who is this amazing actress. Both the film industry and audiences were buzzing for this new face. And among Charlize's newfound fans was a first-time director who happened to be casting his movie. The man was Tom Hanks. The film was That Thing You Do. I would have played the girl carrying a tray of Coke past the camera. I would have been that girl. I, 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 I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan. I think, uh, I think I'm in this business um, because of Tom Hanks pretty much, too. I, I have very vivid memories as a nine-year-old watching Splash. And, uh, and just being completely mesmerized and going, why am I not the blonde? I mean, he has definitely been like an idol to me, somebody that I completely admire. And to, to work with him as a director was incredible. Even though her role in Hanks' film was not a lead, people continue to see in Charlize an actress with huge potential. In 1998, director Taylor Hackford cast her opposite Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves in The Devil's Advocate, and Woody Allen had her share top billing with Leonardo DiCaprio in Celebrity. Charlize had been catapulted into the Hollywood major leagues. Early on, she proved that she had a special talent and intuition for finding great roles in quality scripts. You have to read a lot of projects and you have to... Um, you know, it's, it's simple in the way that it happens. As soon as you start reading it or on page 30, something happens and you... You get intrigued and you feel like you want to go and really investigate and you get excited and there's this process that happens to you as an actor. The hard part about that is the fact that sometimes it takes a while to get the right thing. But it's never, for me personally, been now I'm looking for the genre, now I'm looking for a comedy, now I'm looking for a drama or anything like that. I, um, I, I think that it just, it, it comes and you respond to it, and you do it. In 1999, as Charlize appeared in the Cider House Rules, an award-winning film based on the John Irving novel, she felt the first big sting of stardom. Photographs taken before she was famous came back to haunt her. She had once posed nude for photographer Guido Argentini, who now wanted to cash in on her celebrity image. Charlize found herself in a legal battle to prevent the release of the photos. She felt they would tarnish her image just as she was building a respected acting career. The photos eventually found their way into the public arena in the May issue of Playboy magazine. But the scandal passed and the sexy pictorial did nothing to damage her career. Quite the contrary. Her next big movie was starring alongside bad boy Ben Affleck in the action thriller Reindeer Games. Charlize's co-star was fascinated by her beauty, but was ultimately floored by her humility. First of all, she's quite a stunner, quite a beauty, and uh, but luckily she's also like a pretty down-to-earth, pretty cool girl. So uh, you know, there's always you're always a little bit afraid that you're going to sort of work with somebody and they're going to be you know pretentious or difficult or you know wanting to be kind of behave like a prima donna and cause a lot of problems and that was sort of the opposite of, of who Charlize was. She's willing to uh, make fun of herself and, like, you know, not be pretty. I mean, and she, it's difficult for her not to be. She carries an enormous amount of beauty, makeup or no, but she, uh, it was fun. It was, it was a good time. This down-to-earth quality has become somewhat of a trademark for Charlize. Having learned a hard lesson with the publication of the unauthorized photos, she worked hard to uh, keep her career in the forefront and her private life out of the tabloid press. Once linked to actor George Clooney, Charlize dated Stephen Jenkins, lead singer of the popular rock band Third Eye Blind, for four years. In that time, they managed to keep the media scrutiny at bay. No small feat in today's paparazzi culture. I think it's really difficult to exist under the scrutiny of Hollywood media and still manage to maintain an authentic sense of self. For me, what it means to be an actor is, is, is to be as authentic as you possibly can, to, to go after, to chase after the reality. I don't, you know, I don't consider myself the most um, taught or studied actor in the business, but I do, I do have a, 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 
a need to, when I go and, and, and play a character in a film, to go after the truth and to make it as, as truthful as I possibly can, to go after the, the authenticity of it. When we come back, we'll see what famous blockbuster Charlize turned down so she could take on a more gratifying role. You have to be able to relate to this. And we all know what the movie's trying to say. Live every day like it's your last. In 2001, after accepting relatively small roles in Robert Redford's Legend of Bagger Vance and Men of Honor with Robert De Niro, Charlize turned down an offer to play the lead in the big-budget war epic Pearl Harbor for a more fulfilling role. She played Sarah, a terminally ill woman with only a few months to live, in the emotionally charged film Sweet November. Her co-star, Keanu Reeves, was a selfish businessman who, thanks to her, learns to cherish life. I think anybody who works a lot, like us, like all of us, I think there's, you have to be able to relate to this. And we all know what the movie's trying to say. Live every day like it's your last. Take in every moment. Step back a little bit. Watch what's going on around you. Um, but I also like the idea of just being aware. This being Keanu and Charlize's second film after The Devil's Advocate, it was an opportunity for them to deepen their working relationship. We enjoyed working together then, and um, so to be reunited with her uh, and to see how much she's grown and as an actress and a person. And, you know, the, but when I, one of the specifics of that is just the, her depth of feeling, her depth of understanding, and um, the way that we work together, I really enjoy. There's an easiness, there's a trust, there's a comfort. And uh, I think it comes across on screen. Even though they were tackling a story dealing with dark themes, the mood on the set was often more than lively. It's interesting, fun stories. Oh. That have happened on the film. Like when you hit me and stuff like that? Yeah, when you trip me. Yeah, like the poison and stuff like that. Right, when you set my trailer on fire. Yeah. That was fun. But I sent you a six pack, I mean. <clears throat> you did, that kind of made it. That made it better, right? Yeah. And you got that glass slipper I sent you. Yeah, I did. did, I, did. I, I didn't try it on yet, uh, but we'll you know, see we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but underneath the glamour and her seemingly charmed life, Charlize has had her share of tragedy. When she was 14 years old in South Africa, her father slipped into alcoholism and became abusive with her mother. One evening, after a violent altercation, her father attacked her mother, who in turn shot and killed him in self-defense. That surreal act of brutality has created a deep wound in Charlize, one that can never truly heal. Sometimes traumatic incidences in childhood can have a deeply painful effect that lasts and scar a person the entire length of their lifetime. But in some cases, people can overcome this and turn this kind of a trauma into a strength, whether by creative output, artistic expression. Somehow, some people are able to work through these issues and actually thrive in the long term. Like for many great artists, Charlize's work can be seen as a therapeutic process to work out her demons. In 2003, a situation reminiscent of her family's tragic past came rushing back to the present. Charlize took on the role of Eileen Woros, an abused prostitute who in a crucial scene points a gun at a man who is attacking her and shoots. The film Monster was the true story of America's first female serial killer. She was raped by, um, um, by one of her Johns and, she, and, and he was going to kill her and she ended up killing him. And it's really from there on her life just kind of downward spiraled. She tried to pick her life up after that. She wanted to quit hooking. She wanted to get a real job. She wanted to clean her life up. She had love. All of a sudden she had all this hope in her life and 
she could just never, she had just made so many bad decisions in her life that at the end of the day, she ended up killing uh, seven of her Johns. Charlize believed in the film so much, she signed on as a producer to make sure it got made. She also dove into the role with a fierceness and commitment not seen since De Niro played Jack LaMotta in Raging Bull. To slip into Eileen's skin, she gained 30 pounds. Gone was the beautiful Charlize people knew. Her physical and emotional transformation was complete. I am naturally a little athletic looking, so I wanted to get my body to a place where it wasn't about getting fat, it was just about making my body kind of this survival thing. You get where you get food, that's what you eat. She had a beer gut, she had a child, she she had a very specific looking body. For director Patty Jenkins, Charlize didn't just play Eileen Woros, she became her. It, I don't even know where to begin. You know, an actor, she brought the character to the character. You know, I wrote the character and I am pleased with what I wrote and I, you know, I, and that's all great, but an actor either brings a human being to life or they don't. And she brought Eileen Woros to life with such nuance and honesty and love and, um, and honesty about who this person was in the darkness and the light. She brought, you know, so much nuance and depth to the character. Film critics couldn't find enough adjectives to rave about her performance. Soon, Charlize found herself nominated for dozens of acting awards, including the Golden Globe and the coveted Oscar. Before this all happened, if you would have told me that this that people would be saying, you know, you actually would be nominated for your first film, I would have I would have never believed it. But after being on set, not only seeing the performance that she gave, but also seeing how hard it was for her, it's not an easy thing to do. People want to believe in accidental genius. It literally was one of the hardest things I've ever seen somebody do. And so after seeing that. I walked away from filming it myself saying, if she if she doesn't get recognized for how incredible what she just did was, I, you know, I, I, I won't, I'll be stunned. So it's, it's strangely like, when I step outside of it, it's thrilling to be involved with it myself. But as a friend to Charlize and as a supporter of what I saw happen, you know, I, I believe more than anyone that she, that it's an unbelievable performance. They couldn't raise her high enough for it. Charlize won virtually every award she was nominated for, including the biggest prize of all, the 2004 Academy Award for Best Actress. She also gained the distinction of being the first African ever to win an Oscar. Thank you. Even in her moment of glory, Charlize didn't forget to acknowledge her South African roots. The film opened in South Africa yesterday, so I'm, I'm going to go to South Africa. And uh, they've been so unbelievably supportive. and and. Um, I'm gonna go back home and go and show them a, an Oscar. So, and I will do some press over there for the film and then we're gonna have our European release end of March, so I'll still do a little bit of press for that. But um, yeah, in a way, this is kind of the farewell. <laughs> it was, it's a good farewell. Charlize's astounding performance won her praise and respect from her fellow actors. Beautiful, did an incredible job, very deserving. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I think way beyond the, you know, the whole physical thing, I think obviously she really had inhabited that so much. I think it's, it's great for her that she, she got an opportunity to do that. I thought that was well deserved. It was an extraordinary, you know, powerful, uh, seems like risk-taking, uh, you know, adventure for this very lovely girl to be this, to translate herself in this way. And everybody was very impressed with her, and we all care about her too. She's a, she's a lovely gal. So this was her hour too. It was great. Hey, Charlie. A few weeks later, Theron made a triumphal return visit to South Africa where she was officially received by Nelson Mandela. It was an emotional homecoming for the girl who had left at 16 years of age. Back in Hollywood, Charlize discovered how much an Oscar can transform a career. A deluge of scripts came in and her salary was lifted to a reported $10 million per film. Feeling an intense amount of pressure, Charlize accepted to make Head in the Clouds, a small independent film with Penelope Cruz. The international shoot gave Charlize an opportunity to get away from Hollywood and reflect on her career. It was a very smart move for her to take a step back and put things into perspective. When you win an Oscar, everybody wants a piece of your success, and it's a literal whirlwind. You have agents, producers, directors, all knocking on your door because they want you to be a part of their next project. 
There's also an incredible pressure to keep performing at a very high level. And at the same time, it's hard for actors because they have to deal with the pressure of making the right decisions and continuing after that accolade. And for lots of actors, they simply can't cope with the pressure in their careers. Please. Charlize, however, seems to have managed to come out of it with her career intact so far. Coming up, we'll see how Charlize put a twist in her career by bringing a sci-fi comic series heroine to the big screen. I was looking for something completely different. It was right after Monster, and this had a lot of elements that was just night and day from, from that. Charlize made an unusually bold choice to play the lead in Aeon Flux, an action sci-fi film based on a cult cartoon series. In it, she plays a futuristic female rebel, sent on impossible missions battling with her lover and enemy, Trevor Goodchild. For diehard fans of the series, Charlize wasn't an obvious choice, but at the Comic-Con convention, she convinced them that she understood the character and that she had the acting and physical abilities to pull it off. I was looking for something completely different. It was right after Monster, and this had a lot of elements that was just night and day from from that for me, and so I felt like it was quite a challenge to take on, and, and I was just lucky to be a part of it. Charlize's prominent position in Hollywood also gave her a unique opportunity to support her favorite charities, especially those dedicated to battling AIDS in Africa and to protecting animal rights. When Charlize shows up at a benefit gala, people's wallets open up. At a fundraiser, a man was reported to have paid $38,000 to have dinner with Charlize. Following the trend in advertising where A-list actresses were tapped to represent high-end products, Charlize joined the ranks of Nicole Kidman, Uma Thurman, and Kate Blanchett when she signed multi-million dollar deals to be the face for a designer perfume, as well as for a major cosmetics company. But those duties didn't detract her from pursuing her acting career. In 2005, Charlize found another challenging lead role in the acclaimed film, North Country. In it, she plays Josie Ames, a female coal miner who fights and wins the first sexual harassment case in America. Once again, Charlize found a way to tie in her own life experience to help bring a strong female character to life. I mean, I'm very comfortable in these kind of communities. I grew up in a community very similar to this. Harsh landscapes. Um, I like those kind of people. They're strong. They don't sit and wallow in self-pity or feel sorry for themselves. And every day is a survival. And so I, I have a great respect and appreciation for this community and really loved being there. So that was, I really related to that. Felt like I was home somewhat. The character of Josie Ames is essentially about a Norma Ray of our generation. It focuses on an ordinary woman who against extraordinary odds goes after what she believes in and in the process discovers self-empowerment. And really, this is a metaphor for Charlize Theron's own life and career. With yet another powerful on-screen performance, critics were talking Oscar all over again, something Charlize had a hard time processing. I don't feel anything, you know, I don't pay any attention to it because it's not, it's not why I get out of bed in the morning. I feel incredibly honored to have experienced that once in my life. Very few actors get to experience that. I think I would be a complete, selfish, horrible human being to even think or consider that that happens to you twice. Um, I'm very proud of this film, but I can't, you know, I just can't, I can't think that way. I don't, it's just not how I function. And, you know, if people love this film and, and, and go and see this film, that's really, that's a gift. And, and being able to make it was a gift. In 2005, at the mere age of 30, Charlize Theron has found herself in a class of her own in Hollywood. After 24 films, her career is a rare conjunction of two qualities, box office appeal and critical success. A balance difficult to achieve and maintain. 
To assure her longevity and to continue working on fulfilling projects, Charlize has begun working as a producer, developing film scripts dear to heart. Like other foreign actors such as Nicole Kidman, Russell Crowe, and Mel Gibson, Charlize is an immigrant who has come to Hollywood and literally made her dreams come true. It was only fitting that she receive her star on the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame. With literally much fanfare, the unveiling ceremony was held in October 2005. As expected, Charlize was sincerely humbled by the experience. Thank you so much, you guys. Really, thank you.